actually uh, this thing design or design thinking uh, is a process where we solve business problems or any kind of problems through design okay when i see a design so if the spacing is not right then it's not at all a good design so in a new age perspective that is saying that good ux design uh, is an thing which is invisible to the users consistency also one of the key principles here so it should be consistent throughout your design so so while we are exploring about design the process aspects of designing what does the term think design mean to you kiran Actually, uh, this thing design or design thinking uh, is a process where we solve business problems or any kind of problems through design. Of course. So, for example, for a company, revenue is the most important mm-hmm. thing. Okay. So, for uh, there are many ways to get the revenue. Uh, of course. So, by selling, if you are selling a product, means we can get the revenue through lots of ways by doing marketing, by doing sales, and doing things, right? Mm-hmm. So, maybe if you are trying to, uh, we are planning or we are working on to get the same revenue through design. That's design thinking. So, for example, uh, for marketing, you need to st- spend some amount or uh, some budget to get the product to the users, and then the user uh, uh, users have to think that okay, whether I can uh, uh, buy the product or not, or whether I mean they have to take a lot of decisions and they will buy the product, right? So, uh, if you say in terms of tech, right? So, if we are pre- uh, uh, we are pre- creating a landing page for a, a course, right? So, what we will do is marketing they pro- they make a campaign, okay? Course. So, they make a campaign and uh, they will make uh, they will make sure that. the course is uh, sent to the users okay so when the user clicks on the product and then he lands on the page right so you will have a lot of questions like uh, whether this course is for me or not whether i can do this course or not whether i will uh, whether if i buy this course it will be useful or not so that will be lot of questions to answer all that questions we need to provide content or we need to uh, provide content in a uh, storytelling way that the user will be uh, feel like when when he scrolls right all his questions need to be answered in that page so when all the questions are answered he will buy that course So that's design thinking. So I mean, I took a ad tech or a landing page as an example. Yeah. It's the same for all the things for e-commerce site as well. So if if you are going for e-commerce site, right? So let's uh, let's say Amazon. So the first thing which you will see is the title of the product which you are looking, and then you will see for reviews, the star rating, yeah. price, the discounts, and all that. Yeah, yeah. So the order in which you see. So that's design thinking. Okay. So uh, while uh, you know Kiran said uh, exclusively about thing design or design thinking. as he went by the term which is absolutely amazing how and what you uh, said it was very clear and loud does uh, spotting a good design also have a process uh, if so can you please tell us the elements of a good design anita okay uh, so design is all about subjective okay yeah. so one design could be amazing for me but it's not for appealing for one and the person sure but still uh, we have like a principles ui principles and ux principles so that if we follow if designers as a whole like follow these principles it will be like a aesthetically pleasing design so some of the principles would be like the color contrast visual like the hierarchy as kiran said and spacing uh, typography etc yeah. for healthcare we are, will be using like the green color for agriculture we'll be using the green color if some websites are professional websites we'll be using like the blue color to build the brand trust so a uh, color plays a major role and also it will be same for the typography as well uh-huh. for kids and all we will be using like the funky style uh, text and for professional websites we will be using like the professional kind of uh, typography right uh-huh. so that plays a major role in the overall design and also when it comes to the consistency also one of the key principles here so it should be consistent throughout your design so in the first page the button color will be green and in the last page button color will be a uh, blue means the user gets cons- confused of course it should be consistent throughout your design so these are some of the principles and elements that every designer should follow so that they'll have a good design and uh, that will be useful to the users and uh, ux wise also it will be like good and uh, it will like uh, the journey with me like the good journey okay so for you um, you know good design what would you say is a good design when you spot it how what is the process of you uh, specifically as a ui ux designer for a good design you would say okay when i see a design so if the spacing is not right then it's not at all a good design right for example if they put 
uh, in a screen, if the header is in like 20 pixels or 14 pixels, then we won't be able to see it, of course. Actually, in design, we'll say the minimum pixels are for a font is like the 12 pixels. Mm. So if we go uh, below the 12 pixels, you won't be able to read it. So yeah. you'll be able to read read it, read the text and it should be accessible, right? So sure, it is a good design. So these principles you have to follow throughout your disease. And uh, Kiran, you were about to say, tell us something by adding a uh, pointer. Yeah. yeah, so actually, uh, in addition to what Anita said, right? So she said uh, in, in all the, the all those things from a UA perspective, but in a UX perspective, that is saying that good UX design uh, is a thing which is invisible to the users. Okay. Okay, so that thing, I mean, which is meaning, uh, if a user performs an action without even thinking or uh, intuitively is doing the action means, it is good design. Because... Okay. It, which is which goes along with this user flaw, which is which goes along with this word flaw, which he has he has been practiced. Right? Say for example, login thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I we have the I mean we have not uh, I mean two to three types of login, uh, yeah, right? like yeah. mobile login or email login and that. Yeah. So if the user finds no difficulty in logging for a, logging in on a product, right? Mm -hmm. So it is a good design. I, as far it. as the UX is concerned. So assuming now everyone knows uh, about the difference between UI and UX design. If not, they have to definitely go for segment one and, and you know, hear that about UI, UX design, what are the differences and how to, you know, look at the skill that a UI, UX designer has and everything, right? So where do you find similarities and how do you work with them? A similarity of between UI and UX is that the end goal. So mm -hmm. the end goal is that the users should feel, uh, any, I mean, the users should experience a meaningful experience. I mean, so yeah, like, yeah. So you should feel like they are, they have, they have. I mean, they have experienced a beautiful product. Like so, like uh, eating a delicious uh, meal. So uh -huh. after eating a delicious meal, they feel uh, relieved or they feel satisfied. Right? Yeah. So that's how they should feel after they're using a product. So that's the main uh, similarity uh, between, I mean, between the UA and the US, which is the goal, the end goal. So as Kiran said, there are like the end goal is the point, right? Yeah. So users should reach the end goal uh, without any obstacles or hurdles in between. Okay. Mm -hmm. So UI and UX, in, when it comes to the usability standpoint, uh, so UI designer will be looking for the visual elements that are usable. So the click rates, whether it's clickable or accessible, those kind of things. Whereas the UX designers will be focusing on the overall user experience and the user flows of the product. From designing to usability testing, can you please briefly run through the process of how it is uh, done? So actually, there is no specific uh, process. Okay, so we have like the design thinking techniques and double delivering uh, delivering methods and all, mm -hmm. but still it depends on the project requirements. Okay? okay, so some projects require like three processes and some projects require like five processes, and it depends on the company as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, so overall, to say like there is a design thinking process, we first covered in the first question. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So it starts from research to the testing part. So first, the research part, we'll go to the users, we'll interview them, uh, we'll send out the survey forms, we collect qualitative data, quantitative data, everything. And then we'll analyze everything and we'll come to a point like uh, what are the user needs, their pains, their motivations, everything. After that, uh, what we do is we just frame the design problems, like what are the problems, existing problems. And then after that, we be like figuring out solutions, like not solutions, like possible solutions or hypothesis, like to prove, okay, these are the right things or these are the wrong things and all. Okay, right. So after that, what we do is we start by a framing and then we'll come to the designing part. So we'll uh, design like high fidelity designs with <laughs> like with colors and everything and we prototype it, which is which will be like a functional prototype. Uh, before developing part. So I okay. go to the users again, we'll do the AV testing or just a user testing, mm -hmm. do everything. And after that, we'll find out where the users got stuck or where they got confused, or whether it's easy to use or whether it's appealing for them, everything. After that, uh, we get the feedback, right? After the feedback, we'll again go to the designing part and we'll iterate on. So the design, design is not a linear process. We'll be keep on iterating and that's why we are having like 2.0 versions, 3.0 versions. Yeah, so many versions are there, right? Mm -hmm. So after that, we go live and then what we do is we check the performance for the whole one month or two months. 
then we get the data and after that again we do the design design so this keep on going right so when we were talking about uh, mundane tasks uh, in the previous segment where our users uh, and audience have to go back to the first uh, previous uh, you know podcast and listen to it but uh, don't you guys find uh, these is mundane tasks because when anita said that it is also feeling that it's a repetitive process right so what do you think about that actually the process is the repetitive process but the uh, information you get from each process that it's totally different okay when so we we design that okay if we put a cta button i mean for example let's take a cta button in the page right mm-hmm. so uh, we put it like uh, the copywriting and we like enroll enroll now or buy now thing mm-hmm. so we may uh, we may assume that this will get a lot of conversion for the page or mm-hmm. a lot of buying where people will, people who come into the page will buy a lot of uh, uh, there will be a lot of buyings in the page because of that cta or anything which we added uh-huh. right? but the total the observations we do after the it went it will go slow right it will go to the opposite to what we assume so okay. we will they will be like uh, we'll be scratching for it so what app and we thought that this should work like uh, this should add uh, something to the users and they should buy right mm-hmm. no but this is not working so what do we do so we'll uh, we need and like and the server will be reacting mm-hmm. so again we need to show it maybe uh, instead of buy now uh, the buy now can be a little um, not man this approachable for the users mm-hmm. so maybe uh, like they need to buy uh, when since they just like buy now so they need to spend some money so they when they see that buy now they will they get and uh, pronounce on that they need to spend some money or to buy this yeah yeah so if we uh, change it to like like we get a little bit from buy now to end on now it's uh, getting a little lighter tone right so yeah. now it's like maybe we can go for a free course as well yeah. so like yeah. like this is like enrolling now right so it can have a lot of ctr mm-hmm. so the ctr is like conversion through right? click through rate right? so uh, it can have a lot of ctr and after clicking that we will can buy i mean that many i mean when it goes i mean when we get it a light that we a little bit of more uh, improvement of the conversion rate when we have the cta right mm-hmm. so like that we will be doing reiterating so maybe instead of just buy now or just send now maybe we can let like, limited time of uh, buy now like, that we uh, create urgency urgency and honey yeah of course the editing for each thing uh, for each section and each thing so uh, the process which sarita described can be uh, repetitive or the similar thing but the execution of the data which we get for each task right so that will be totally different i it will be totally uh, unpredictable okay so can can you tell me um like one uh, of such situation or one project that you handled that looked entirely uh, you know different from what you actually thought it would be okay <laughs> actually we are facing that situation right now okay <laughs> actually i started in nowhere uh, so we designed a landing page for our a uh, course it's a web development course and yeah. so after that we had like sales for pongal uh, no, no, big day everything yeah yeah that's right so we thought it would get we got more conversions uh, before there was like old variant design uh-huh. after that we designed something new we uh-huh. changed like uh, some segments we added new segments we added motivations everything we thought okay the conversion should be good it will like most like two we get like two times conversions everything we were thinking but no it's not the fact fact okay After like two months of collecting the data, the conversion was still the same. Okay. We didn't know like uh, why this happened, what was happening. Again, like uh, we have to like it reduce, and again we are doing the task. Like after one month, what we did this like we again changed something, and we went live. And after that, there was a slight increase in the conversion, like mm-hmm. 10%, 3%. Conversion. Okay, sir. So. But it's not enough for us. Yeah, like 20% is. Sure, sure. That is that is the aim. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what we are doing the right now, like 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 we are doing so we are going back to the user research part and collecting the data and after that we have to do the same steps we have to iterate and we have to test it and after that we will check the data and if still not the conversion is high we are we going to repeat okay so uh, why you guys are designing right so how how would you find out that this is the place that went wrong is is there a possibility to do that in designing actually we uh, use uh, analytics sort of like clarik and google analytics mm-hmm. to collect the data we uh, see users recordings how user interact with the product right? mm-hmm. so at that time we are so like okay maybe uh, this by and i like i said by now this uh, copywriting may not be uh, yeah, maybe. for the users maybe mm-hmm. that's what scaring them from clicking it mm-hmm. so we can we need to change it so it's all assumption based thing so then we go, when we go into live 
and then we will check for another thing okay maybe this is the thing okay so it will be like a repeated to iterative process okay so so how do you uh, you know deal with that process of frustration like do you deal it with uh, all of your team members or do you deal it with alone like what is your process both of you Uh, yeah, mostly we deal it with our team members uh, all the time. So if I get fr- frustrated, we call all the team members. We we'll have a meet and we we'll explain our problems. Like uh, this is going on. What else can explain or vent? I want to do that. <laughs> like uh, sharing this process and all. All of the okay. Why, why only we should scratch our bits? Or, <laughs> or, or, why they are not doing? So we we'll ask them. So them was that they they will not start it. Yeah. <laughs> We will give such a see. I will try it out. If it's not going good, again we'll call everything. So every one of them, and we'll again discuss. So okay, so that that is how it goes, right? So when um when we were talking about all this head scratching process and other things, right? You said that uh one word that uh made me circle back to this question, right? Is um the design aspects and pers uh perceptions and perspectives differ when we are uh you know designing for at tech industry specifically kiran uh, actually uh, the design aspects won't differ that much uh, okay. it will be the same cta buttons or the mm-hmm. same kind of thing which we use for every uh, every other landing page mm-hmm. but with this what what motivation they are coming the uh, motivation of the users will change from one user to another for the uh, especially for the ad tech okay because uh, we have a lot of time in our target range is diverse from 20, uh, 18 years to 25 years or sure. 35 years right sure. so each will have different motivations when they come into page yeah. so we need to analyze or in mean, analyze or we need to design uh, considering all their motivation so anyone who anyone I mean a college student should also buy this course a working professional should also, also buy, buy this course yeah. so what they need so they that it should be a mixture of both their uh, bait points right mm-hmm. so we need to provide solutions to both their problems yeah. a college a student they will have a problem of interview uh, attending interviews for a placement and yeah. the uh, uh, working professional may have a problem of home skilling yeah. to get more uh, Uh, to, to switch from one field to another, or to get, get a uh, promotion kind of thing, right? Yeah. So we need to address both the failing, uh, both their uh, pain points, and we need to design as per that. Okay. So uh, I think it uh, mostly differs with the motivations of the users. Okay. So, and and that too, even though uh, even after they buy the courses, right? So they won't complete the course. So we yeah. we all do, right? We all yeah. we all buy a course and we won't complete it. Yeah. So so we need to think how to make them complete it. So okay. they need. I mean, they have they have a problem, and they thought our course will solve their problem, and they have bought that. Uh, they they have bought a course, but they need to complete the course to uh, solve their problem, problem right? Yeah. So then only they will come for another uh, course or another uh, problem they they face. They will come to us again, right? Mm-hmm. So to increase that completion rate, what should we do? Mm. What can be done? So that also need to be thought. So from user, I mean, after I mean, after they from the moment they land on our page. So to make them buy and to complete the course, everything should be done uh, for a taking day. That is amazing, actually. When you are talking about all of these uh, things, right? What do you think about uh, when when he said like uh, thinking about the users when especially coming to a tech industry? As he said, like uh, when I go and buy, say, uh, you know, a piece of pen from Amazon, I buy it and then that's it. I give a review and it's done. But it's not, uh, you know, similar to a tech industry as Kiran said. So uh, when that process comes in, how do you think when you are uh, going about it, uh, Anita? Uh, actually, what we are doing right now is so we are like kind of revamping the product. Yeah. So in that process, uh, our main goal is we are going to uh, we make the users complete the course, and yeah. then we want the user to return to us and buy another course. Uh huh. But what we are doing is we are including like so many motivations. Ah, uh, sure. Sure, sure. At the elements in the process, so that they will be motivated all the time, and they will like uh, don't give up, and they'll continue with the course, and they'll finish the course. So these are some of the methods we are trying, so that the we get the completion rate. So it okay. We need to motivate like that to uh, to have the users uh, to maintain the user retention. Mm-hmm. So in this segment, we got two other job roles of UI UX designer. That one is cheerleaders. The other one is motivators. and you can be gym trainers also with that motor actually <laughs> so with that last we will be concluding this segment right and we will be moving on to the other segments and we will be talking uh, more and more about what are the skills you should be improving in ui ux community what are the challenges uh, the job aspects that is happening in ui ux and everything 